Hello again. In this exercise, we will work on the classification of marginal lands. To do this, we will use the layer of soft indicators that we have obtained as a result of the previous exercise in Subception 2.3 Soft Constraints. We will also use the result of the hard layer analyze that has explained it in the section 2.2. We will work with both soft and hard layers only for the area of interest. We are going to do this exercise in Google Earth Engine. For new users on Google Earth Engine, I recommend it that you review the information in the shared document. If you don't have an account in Google Earth Engine, the first thing to do is to create it. And when you have your account, you can try to do the exercise or you can copy the code and analyze this. In Google Earth Engine, we have datasets available and we can search for them in the dataset bar. But in this exercise, we will work with the layers that we had previously created and we have to upload them as assets. In this case, in the tools of the left side of Google Earth Engine interface, we have the assets tab. Here, I have already uploaded the files and they are available for you. And in the document, additional information, you have the links. However, uploading the files is as easy as clicking on new, then select, for example, GeoDiv, if we want to upload a raster. And then in the tab that opens, we will have to find our layer. Choose some of these properties if it's necessary and press upload. Once we have the layers as asset, we can import them into the code by clicking on the narrow. Once the asset is imported into the code, we can rename it to make it easier to understand. I have prepared a script that I have shared with you in the same document, additional information in which we are going to analyze the different steps to, to obtain the classification of marginal lands following the criteria proposed in the main project. The first thing we will do is to up, up the values of the different soft layers. For this, we will use the add algorithms and the different soft indicators. To start with, we have to generate a new variable that we name sum shove and then we have added the soft layers. We add all the soft layer and then we write semicolon. To visualize the result it is necessary to use another algorithm. This algorithm is map point at layer. And as an argument of the function, we have introduced the layer, the color with, with uh, which we want it to be represented, and the resulting map name. To know all the arguments of the function, you have to go to the doc tab, and in map, you can see the algorithm map point at layer. And if you press it, you can see the different parameters. The only mandatory argument in the, in the is the first one that refers to the input layer. Now, if we press run, Google Earth Engine will start the process and we will move on the map to Spain that we can see the final map. Before analyzing the result, we are going to cut this layer with the hard layer. This hard layer indicates the marginal lands according to the criteria established in the mail project. These criteria were explained in section 2.2. To do this, we generate another variable that we rename marginal land ROI, and we will use the update mask function where the masked areas will be those that are in marginal lands. We use again the function app point at layer to represent where the result. Once the process is finished, in the map you can see a tab called Layer Manager. If we press it, we can stop the visualization of the first layer that we have created and see only the hard layer with the different marginality values. 
Here we can observe the marginal lands with the marginality values that we have established based on the indicator of the shore, slope, soil texture, depth, soil available to rot, and organic matter. The green colors represent the lowest marginal areas, meaning marginal lands with high plantation sustainability, and the more intense the red color represent, the higher marginality, for example, potentially unsustainable lands. If we click in the console output of the Spectre tab and then click on a pixel, we can see the specific value. Once we have identified the marginal lands and we also know the marginality values, we will start with the classification. Remember that the classification will be done following three criteria. The first criterion is to calculate the 25 and 35 percentage to establish the boundaries of the three classes. Values below the 25 percentile represent potential unstable lands. Between the 25 and 75 percentile represent low plantation sustainability. And values between the 25 and 100 percentile represent high plantation sustainability. For this, we will use the function reduce region that allows us to calculate the statistic of all the pixels of our region. In this case, our statistics are the 25 and the 75 percent. As an argument, we will indicate the margin and the geometry that we want to apply to it. In this case, the row. In addition, we will indicate the mass pixel for the maximum number of pixels to input to the reducer. At this point, Wheel F Engine has calculated the percentage values but has not saved it yet. To save them, we need to create two variables more. And we will use the getNumber function with the pad name. This process can be very slow if the study area is very large. Once we will know the percentage values, we can set the thresholds. For this, we are going to create another variable that we have named classification marginal lands 2575. We will use the where clause together with the logical and operator to describe the threshold. That's it. Where marginal lands clipped with the highlighter have a value greater than zero and less than or equal to 25 percentile, the values will be three. It's mean potentially unsustainable land. When the pixel value is greater than 25 percentile and less than or equal to 25 percentile, the value will be 2, low plantation sustainability. And finally, when the pixel value is greater than 25 percentile, the value will be 1, high plantation sustainability. Then, we add the resulting layer to the map as we have done in the previous step. In the layer manager, we can modify to leave only the layer we were are interested in. So we will see in the red potential sustainable land, in yellow low potential sustainability, and green high plantation sustainability. In the console tab, you can see the corresponding value. To perform the classification according to the second criteria, we can only copy the code and modify the percentiles. In this case, the percentile is 23 and 76. We will also change the final name of the map. If we click on Run, we can see the resulting map and the difference with the previous one. For example, here we can see some orange pixel that we have changed from the class low plantation sustainability to the class potential sustainable lands. Next, we will apply the last classification criteria based on the maximum and minimum values. The process is the same as before, with the difference that the reducer will use the minimum and the maximum. In this case, when setting the threshold, we will obtain them directly from the console. Once we have the three maps, we can compare them, noting how the values change if we have one criteria or other. In this case, we see that with the maximum and minimum, the high plantation sustainability class is favored, 
with 25 and 75% in the low plantation sustainability classes favored, and perhaps the 33 and 76% method is the ones that best distribute the values among the true classes. Also, we have classified since we need these categories for later tax. But we believe that the most important result is to know the marginality values of the pixel and to define the action to be taken on the marginal lands according to the values. At last, I just want to show you that to export this map, we have several tools. One of them is to export the result as an asset, and for this, we will call the function export image into asset. You have the argument in the top tab. In our case, the argument that we have used are the input image, the sum with the marginality values, the projection system, the spatial resolution, the region of interest, and the maximum number of pixel width which we want to work. Another option will be to export the result to Google Drive, whose arguments are similar to the different that we have to indicate the folder where we want to save the result. That's all for today, dear friends. I hope you found the exercise useful, and if you have any question, please ask me in the email below. Thank you for your attention.